Hey everyone, you with Tesla Tom, and thanks for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. Today I'd like to highlight the differences between basic autopilot, enhanced autopilot, and full self-driving capability for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. Before we get into the differences, I'd like to make it clear that this information is very specific to my situation living in an urban area in Sydney, Australia in June 2022. These features may actually be different in your part of the world depending on laws and regulations in different markets. So let's begin with basic autopilot and this feature is actually included with all new Tesla Model 3s and Ys in Australia. And as per the Tesla website, basic autopilot enables your car to steer, accelerate and brake automatically for other vehicles and pedestrians within its lane. Advanced safety and convenience features are designed to assist you with the most burdensome parts of driving, alongside driver assistance features such as emergency braking, collision warning and blind spot monitoring. Regular viewers of my channel will know that I frequently document the use of basic autopilot, particularly when it comes to software update videos. The easiest way I can simplify what autopilot is, that it's essentially traffic aware cruise control with auto steering and lane centering. The car will generally drive to your desired speed, sometimes with restrictions depending on where you're driving. It may also sometimes adjust to the current speed limit using a combination of both the car's cameras to read posted speed signs and built in GPS map data that is regularly updated. It's traffic aware, meaning it will follow the leading car as close as the limits set by the driver, and it's auto steer and lane centering, which means it will follow lane markings. In reality, these features work reasonably well on urban roads and very well on highways and freeways. Even on our recent 4,000 km road trip, I'd say I used basic autopilot the majority of the time while on regional highways, and also made for a more pleasant drive with lower fatigue levels. The main drawback is something called phantom braking, and this occurs when the car is overly sensitive with obstacles and will sometimes decide to brake on its own using the built-in forward collision warning system. As you can imagine, this can be potentially dangerous if you are being tailed by a large vehicle behind you. The other drawback is that if the road does not have good lane markings, or if there is poor weather conditions such as heavy rain or snow, or if there is a harsh glare from the sun, then autopilot may switch off automatically. For these reasons, Tesla Autopilot still remains at level 2 autonomy, meaning you need to supervise it at all times and be ready to take over at any time. You cannot and should not be distracted under any circumstances when using Tesla Autopilot. Although overall I think Basic Autopilot works very well and is a fantastic driver aid, particularly on the open road, and for this reason I would give Basic Autopilot a score of 8.5 out of 10 in its current state, 85%. Now let's explore Tesla's Enhanced Autopilot option, which personally I think for $5,100 in Australia represents very good value, and I'll go through why for you now. So of course Enhanced Autopilot includes everything I've already mentioned in Basic Autopilot with the addition of Navigate on Autopilot, Auto Lane Change, Auto Park, Summon and Smart Summon. Let's go through each feature right now. Auto Lane Change. While driving on the highway, automatic lane change will position your car in the optimal lane to prepare for mergers and exits while overtaking slow cars. Drivers are given clear insight to upcoming lane changes as well as customization to auto lane change functionality. This feature alone I think is worth the additional $5,100 for enhanced autopilot. It's extremely useful on the highways when you're on a road trip, if you need to pass slower vehicles while on autopilot. If you didn't have auto lane change, if you were driving on autopilot, then you'd have to turn off autopilot and then manually overtake and then re-engage autopilot. Not a huge inconvenience, but after a few hours into a long drive, this may be something you'd wish you had. The one drawback is that if you were using auto lane change to overtake a big truck only a few kilometers an hour higher than what it's going at, you may experience phantom braking issues, so make sure you go at least 10 to 15 kilometers an hour faster to avoid this. In reality though, overall, auto lane change works really well on the open road and is my favorite feature of this enhanced autopilot suite, and for that reason, I'm giving it 9 out of 10. Auto lane change also works with navigate on autopilot, which we'll go through right now. Navigate on autopilot is automatic driving from highway on ramp to off ramp, includes automatic lane changes, traffic aware cruise control with complete stopping and re-engagement, auto steer and overtaking slow cars in your lane. Now on paper this sounds fantastic, right? It almost sounds like you could almost go to sleep, but I have to tell you it does not work as well as you may think, particularly here in Australia when it comes to taking on and off ramps from freeways. At some exits it wants to merge the other way, i.e. left instead of right and vice versa, which of course is extremely dangerous at high speed. I think this may have to do with a mismatch in programming given NOA was developed mostly for left-hand drive markets. Also be aware that some of our big regional roads are not true freeways because there are occasional crossroads and when that happens, the car switches back to basic autopilot and then back again to NOA. 
Auto lane change does work with navigate on autopilot and you can set how aggressive you want the car to change lanes and the tolerance can be customized from mild all the way to Mad Max mode, which you can imagine what that's like. You can also customize whether you allow the car to lane change by itself with or without confirmation, depending on how well you can hold your nerve. I don't use navigate on autopilot much anymore and I don't think we used it at all during our 4000 km journey and for this reason I'm giving it 5 out of 10. It's just not reliable enough for me and it does freak the wife and kids out. Sorry Tesla. Also NOA remains at level 2 autonomy because you do have to take over and supervise at all times. The next feature is Auto Park. Park with ease in parallel and perpendicular parking spaces with a single button tap on the center display. Model Y will alert you to available parking spots by continuously monitoring the space around you. And nowadays the car uses camera only Auto Park. And I've only so far managed to get it to work with perpendicular parking since they changed over to camera only and not parallel parking. I'll have to try it again with Model Y when it arrives. I gotta say it's also slower than how I would park with my level of experience and skill. And I personally don't feel comfortable using it in a busy car park with a whole line of cars waiting for me to park on auto park. For this reason, I'm scoring at 6 out of 10. Now for summon, there are two parts. There's basic summon and there's also smart summon. According to Tesla, summon is activated by the Tesla app. Your parked car will come find you anywhere in a parking lot and even park or unpark itself in tight spaces. Summon navigates complex parking situations while abiding by lane markings and stop signs, avoiding pedestrians and obstacles like traffic cones, trash bins and rogue shopping carts. Now basic summon is potentially handy if you have a very tight parking space and this is using your Tesla app as a remote control to drive the car in straight lines. I think this works reasonably well, for that I'm giving it 7 out of 10. Smart Summon though is a different kettle of fish and it is like Summon but in two dimensions and again using your Tesla app you can retrieve your car in a parking lot. There are limitations to how far away your car can be. I guess potentially it is useful if it's raining heavily and you've got a whole lot of shopping bags. Again one of those features that sounds great in theory but in practice it's a risky exercise in a busy parking lot. I've never actually personally tried it outside of testing it for the channel or showing it as a party trick. I think Tesla has this feature to show what can be achieved one day with a future autonomous taxi fleet. For me, I'm scoring Smart Summon 6 out of 10. So that's Enhanced Autopilot. Let's explore full self-driving capability. And by the way, viewers have told me that Tesla have confirmed with them that Enhanced Autopilot can be upgraded to full self-driving one day for an extra $5,000, i.e. the balance in pricing if you want to upgrade in the future. So FSD capability is Basic Autopilot, Enhanced Autopilot, with the addition of Traffic Light and Stop Sign Control. Traffic light and stop sign control is designed to slow down and stop for visible traffic lights or stop signs that are detected when traffic aware cruise control or auto steer is engaged. This slide says Tesla designed silicon optimized for computer vision enables detailed on-screen environment visualization and eventual full self-driving capability through over-the-air software updates. Now please note that all new Tesla Model 3 and Model Y vehicles will have the full self-driving computer installed in the vehicle. You just have to pay, of course, for the software to be enabled. All cars will show traffic lights and other visualizations on screen while driving, but you will need to add FSD capability for the car to react to traffic lights and stop signs. If you're the first car at a traffic light and if it turns red, the car will stop. For a green light, if you are following a line of cars, it will automatically go on the green. However, if you're the first car going through a green light, then you'll have to confirm either with your accelerator pedal or by tapping down your right stalk. Now the biggest benefit of FSD capability is the potential to test auto steer on city streets, otherwise what's commonly known as FSD beta in the US and Canada. There are plenty of videos online showcasing FSD beta, with Elon Musk tweeting recently that there is a possibility of FSD beta dropping in right-hand drive markets later this year. Of course, if you don't wish to experience this higher level of autonomous driving, then FSD beta is not worth the extra $5,000 just to have the extra traffic light and stop sign controls. Which, to be really frank, it can be a bit annoying currently having to confirm green lights all the time anyway. So for FSD capability in its current state in Sydney, Australia in June 2022, I'm giving it 5 out of 10, as I don't feel it's really worth it. I would have scored it lower if not for the fact that Elon Musk has previously said that once FSD beta hits your market, then prices will rise. So if you want to lock in today's FSD price to safeguard against a future rise, then it might be worth that extra $5,000 for you. So in summary, I've given Basic Autopilot 85%, Enhanced Autopilot as an aggregate score is 33 out of 50 or 66%, keeping in mind I gave Auto Lane Change 9 out of 10, with that alone being worth the $5,100 for Enhanced Autopilot in my opinion, and FSD capability at today's standard 50%. So you can see that Basic Autopilot included with the car alone is excellent value by itself. And Enhanced Autopilot with the Auto Lane Change presents excellent value 
particularly if you plan to take long trips in the future. To finish up from my Australian viewers, last time Enhanced Autopilot was offered in Australia, it was only for a very short period, but I have a feeling this time around it will be here to stay, given Elon Musk showed in a recent tweet that he would expand it to other markets worldwide as well. Also, if you recently managed to order Tesla Model Y in Australia before the recent price rise, then congratulations. If you're considering adding EAP or FSD to your purchase, I would strongly suggest calling or emailing your Tesla rep instead of doing it yourself online because you'll note that when you review your new edition, it will take into account the new higher MSRP pricing of the car. And of course, you wouldn't want to do that because prices did rise significantly across the board. Also, adding EAP or FSD pre-delivery puts you at risk of going over the luxury car tax threshold in Australia. You can avoid some, if not all, of the LCT if you add it after taking delivery via your Tesla app. Also, bear in mind that adding EAP or FSD may also tip you over the stamp duty threshold exemption in some states for the rear-wheel drive Model Y, so please be aware of that before you add it to your order. Speaking of the recent price rise, I will run through the recent updated pricing in another video, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching everyone. If you're considering adding enhanced autopilot or full self-driving capability to your order, make sure you leave a comment below and tell us why you're doing so. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, take care, stay safe, and as always, happy charging.